Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. I'm going to talk about three people that's under the most pressure for New Orleans Saints in 2022. Uh, and we'll start off with, I think the most obvious answer will be the coaching staff. But in particular, Pete Carmichael, he's number one. Dennis Allen, he's number two. Uh, or at least on my list. Dennis Allen might be number one on some people's list. But the coaching staff has to be better this year. Defense, pretty damn good last year. Passing game. Pretty good run game. Needed some work, but we came in. Got three new defensive tackles. So we try to clean up on that. So I don't really have much on Dennis Allen because the defense was pretty good last year. We got talent out there and Lattimore, Adebo, Taylor, Tom Matthew, Marcus May. The list goes on and on. Secondary is talented, linebackers talented. The defensive line is going to be a question mark. But I think they can hold their own this year. But Pete Carmichael, <laughs> say what you want about last season. You know, him throwing it to that fire. Injuries at the quarterback position have to play Andy Dalton after Jameis Winston went down. I get it. I get it. I get it. Elvin Kamara was hurt a couple games. Michael Thomas out for the season. You got rookie Chris Olave out there with a bunch of other guys. This year, no excuses, man. We went in and re just retooled this entire offense. This entire offense got retooled. You got Trevor Penning, your first round pick. Fine, he's going to be starting that left tackle. Uh, the offensive line is healthy right now. As of now, the offensive line is healthy. When that offensive line is healthy, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good offensive line. It's not the offensive line of old, but it's still probably a top 10 offensive line when everybody's healthy, when everybody's in sync. So you have that going for you. Obviously, you got Derek Carr coming in, a proven quarterback, a guy that's not just average. I'm not going to say he's a great quarterback, but he's good. You know, he, he's shown some great abilities. He's shown some bad abilities as well, but he's been more good in his career. And nothing wrong with just having a good quarterback. I promise you, with the talent on this team, on offense and defense, you just need a good quarterback. You don't need Patrick Mahomes. You don't need Josh Allen. You don't need Joe Burrow. But you also don't need Andy Dalton. So just having a good quarterback is going to bring stability to this offense, a guy that's been around the league. You can't really trick him well, with defenses and blitzes and things like that. He'll probably know what's going on. So you have that, P. Carmichael. Then obviously, the run game. You have Alvin Kamara, who's suspended for three games. That's your one little excuse for the first three games, which is really not an excuse. Then you got Jamal Williams. Then you got Kendra Miller. Um, after that, looking like we're going to have Tony Jones. Don't know who's going to be that third running back. But you still have Jamal Williams and Kendra Miller. And you have Elvin Kamara when he comes back. Running game, great. Receivers, much, much better than last year. Much, much better than last year. Obviously, you got a healthy Michael Thomas. Now, a lot's going to depend on how long he can stay healthy. If he can stay healthy throughout the whole year, you have that. You also got Chris Olave. Year one, Chris Olave, pretty good receiver. This year, I think he's about to make a leap into a different stratosphere and become a great receiver. I think he's going to be really, really good this year. I think he's going to be wide receiver one on the Saints uh, just because you don't know what you're getting out of Michael Thomas. I like what I've been saying. He's been progressing. He's been getting better and better and better. But I think Chris Olave makes that jump. Also have Rashid Shaheed. You have a good number three receiver. Like your receiver core is going to be the best, one of the best it's been in the Saints in a long, long time. And then obviously you got A.T. Perry, you got Curry, you got a bunch of guys rounding out that receiver core who were actually playing, well not A.T. Perry because he's a rookie, but it was, it was guys not as good as them playing last year as our starters, you know. Those guys would be the fourth guy, fifth guy, sixth guys on the roster this year, and that's pretty good. Then you got the tight end room. This is probably the best tight end room we've had, ironically, probably since Jimmy Graham, <laughs> since Jimmy Graham left. You have Jimmy Graham, who's your third string. You have Foster Moreau. And you have, obviously, Jawan Johnson. That was three really good tight ends. You can kind of throw Taysom Hill in that mix if you want to. That is three really good tight ends right there. Three really good tight ends. This is, this is probably the best weapons we've had. Man, I want to say in a long, long time. A long, long time. We had Cooks in, um, in MT. I think MT's rookie year for a little minute. Uh, but this is the best. This is the best, best weapons we've had in a long, long time, man. This reminds me of like the Robert Meachums and Derry Henderson on the same roster like a while ago since like the late, like 2010s, early 2010s, late 2000s. Like this, the talent we have just all around is really, really good on offense. I think this is obviously dependent on if Michael Thomas is healthy. Michael Thomas is healthy, of course. If not, then you make adjustments on that. But this offense is really, really good, man. So Pete Carmichael is going to be under a lot of pressure. It's a lot of things I'm looking for. I'll get more detail in other videos about that. But, man, the screen game. Can we get the screen game involved? Short yardage. Are we just going to be running quarterback sneaks up the middle? Are we going to be running Elvin Kamara right down the middle? How are we going to involve Michael Thomas? How are we going to involve Rashid Shaheed? How are we going to get these different tight ends involved? Will it be a three-back system? Will it be a two-back system? How much of the Taysom package are we going to use? You know, are we going to run 
dual tight end sets, how uh, the Patriots used to run. Obviously, they had one of the best dual tight end systems with Aaron Hernandez and Gronk. Like, are we going to do that with, uh, with uh, Moreau and Jawan Johnson or Jawan Johnson and Jimmy Graham? You know, how are we going to do these things? Are we going to be a run first team, pass first team? It has so many options. Like, all those things I just named is just scratching the surface of what the things he can possibly do with this offense. So, obviously, he's got a lot to prove. I'll definitely be on lookout to see how, we, how he uses all these weapons. Because, you know, it's a lot of weapons and everybody might think that's easy. But that might make it hard on them. Trying to get everybody involved, trying to get everybody the ball. It can become overwhelming. So, definitely going to be on the lookout how he uses these guys um, and things like that. So, P. Carmichael, he's really number one on my list, man. Dennis Allen, he's just on the list as well just because he has to have a good year. He has to have a good year or he's probably out of here. Number two on my list. Oh, before we even get out of there, I want to talk about the offense last year. Offense last year, man. We averaged 300, 333 yards a game. 333 yards a game. Now, I went to look. I went to look at all the previous years, man. All of, even the year before that, in 2021, we averaged 304 yards a game. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's bad. Only teams that were worse were the Texans, the Falcons, and the Panthers. And I looked at every other year before that. I can go through the list right now while I'm on it. 2020, Sean Payton's last year, 376. The year before that, 373. The year before that, 379. The year before that, 391. The year before that. 426, number one in the NFL. And I can keep going on. And the further I go down, it's going to be more prime Drew Brees. And obviously, the number is going to get ridiculous. We don't have that. We don't have Sean Payton. But it can't be 320 yards a game. Can't be 330 yards a game. You just can't have that. You can't be top, bottom 10 in the NFL, man. Not with this talent. Not with this talent. Just not with this talent. It's not. It just can't work. Rushing rule bottom 10 last year, just about. Can't happen, man. With the running game we have, the offensive line we have, you just can't do it. Points, I think we were bottom 10 as well, only averaging 19 points a game. None of that can happen this year. None of that can happen. The talent is way too much on this team. You have a quarterback. You have receivers. You have a running game. You have a good offensive line. Now, the offensive line starts to get hurt, unhealthy, the backups, who knows how that's going to look. But the health right now, it's there. We got to have a good offense this year. I'm tired of defense leading the team. I know the defense is going to bring. And the defense leads the team great. But the offense got to hold their part up. The offense has to hold their part. It's almost like the opposite, man. When Drew Brees was in his prime, offense, 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 no defense. And it slowly started to slip. You know, offense started coming down, coming down. Defense started coming up and coming up. We've never had a year where they both just hit it. I think this could be the year where they both just hit at the same time where a top five offense and a top five defense finally meet. They have the talent on both sides to do it. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Number two on my list, a guy that I mentioned already, a guy like no other, Michael Thomas. Now, obviously, he's under a lot of pressure. Just, I'm sure he put himself under a lot of pressure. Let's start there. Michael Thomas wants to be good. He wants to be talked about as one of the best receivers in the NFL. I know he does. He can say it. He cannot say it. I know Michael Thomas. Well, I don't know him, but I just kind of know how receivers operate, especially those great guys. He wants to be known as one of the best receivers in the NFL. Trust me, he works. He works hard determined the egos there which is not a bad thing trust me ego is not a bad thing especially at the receiver position you kind of need it he wants to be but it's pressure on him this year man haven't played in about two and a half years hasn't played couldn't stay on the field couldn't stay healthy i expect a big season from michael thomas this year now a big season's not 150 catches 1600 yards 12 touchdowns i'm not expecting that if he give us that oh my I'll t i mean i'll take it don't get me wrong i'll take it but i'm not expecting that at all I'm not expecting anything near that from Michael Thomas. I'm expecting 60 to 80 catches somewhere. I've already just that predictions. But, man, 60 to 80 catches, he might miss some games here or there. Uh, you know, maybe 1,000 yards somewhere in there. Who knows? Who knows what he's going to have. It's up and down if he's going to be healthy. But he's under a lot of pressure. Also, he's in a contract year. I think he's about 30 right now. Contract year. Maybe he can have a good year. Maybe get one more deal. Make some money before he goes off into retirement. But I think he's in a... A situation where he has to prove a lot. He took a pay cut, which I'm sure he didn't want to do, but, you know, had to because, I mean, just hasn't played. Just hasn't played for the Saints, so had to do that. Hey, man, now you can go make you some money. Go out, have a good season. Like, it's time. It's time for Michael Tom to show up. I think he's under a lot of pressure. And this third guy, this was interesting for me because I don't really think he's under pressure. Uh, well, some guys I was going to put in here. Let me let me talk about that. Some guys I was going to put in here. Cesar Ruiz, he's under pressure just because this is his fourth year. They didn't pick up his fifth-year option, so he's going to be a free agent after this year if he wants to resign. Trevor Penning, you know, um, 
Second year, didn't play rookie year under a lot of pressure. You could say Elvin Kamara didn't have a really good season last year um, for whatever, and he's been suspended. So he's going to be a guy under pressure. Peyton Turner, former first-round pick, I will say he's under some pressure. It's a lot of guys under pressure, but this guy that I chose, some of y'all may disagree with. Because like I said, he's really not under pressure. But for me, it's Marshawn Lattimore. He's the third guy. After a season where he was injured most of the season, and when he was out there, remember that Vikings game, Justin Jefferson gave it to him. Call it, say, what, say what you want, Justin Jefferson put it on him. A lot of guys don't go out there and cover one-on-one -on -one all the time, but he did it, and it was bad for him. And that's okay, because I think this is going to be his best year yet. I think he's under pressure just from, from himself, man. That contract is slowly starting to, you know what, them years start to tick faster and faster and faster, and that contract's about to get up. If you want to be one of those highest paid guys again, you have to show it. When he's out there, he showed it. He missed a lot of games last year. A lot of games last year. I think he's under pressure just from himself more than anything. Fan base is not under pressure. He's not under pace with the fan base, the GM, the coaches. He's Marshawn Lattimore. Top five corner in the league. I don't care where you put him. But I think he's under pressure from himself because I know he thinks he's the best guy in the league. But you just can't get that rep if you're missing games. Sorry, you can't miss 13 games, every many games you're missing, and come out and say I'm the best corner in the league. And then the games you did play, we saw one where Jefferson got the best of you. This year, I think he's going to show up. I mean, you got Hopkins game one. You got Hopkins game one. He's going to have a lot of good receivers he's going to go against this year. I think he'll show up. I think he'll step to that plate uh, and accept the challenge. I think he's going to be really, really good this year. So my third guy, I'm really just putting the pressure on him for myself. I think he's going to be the best corner in the league this year, and I'm super, super excited to watch him. So my guys, Dennis Allen, Pete Carmichael, Michael Thomas, Marshawn Lattimore. Now, like I said, I named a lot of people that's under pressure. I think Adebo is under pressure. A lot of guys are under pressure, man. Derek Carr is under a little pressure. One year, you know, after Andy Dalton, Jameis Winston, da 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 He's under a like, big contract. He's under a lot of pressure. A lot of guys are going to be under pressure this year, but those are the guys I just wanted to highlight for the most part. Even I could have put Blake Groupie in there, the kicker, man. He's going to be under a lot of pressure. Like, it's going to be a lot of guys under pressure this year for the Saints, but that's the NFL. Every team has guys under pressure. That's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, we'll see how it plays out this year. Definitely going to have more before the game, man. It's finally game week. We finally here, man. We made it. We made it. It's been a long, long offseason with no playoffs. So everybody like the Chiefs and the Eagles got that extra month and a half of football. Hey, man, we've been waiting for a long, long time. A long, long time, man. So, I mean, we we're out of the playoffs before the last week. So finally, it's almost back. We're almost here. It's Wednesday right now. I don't know when you're watching this video. But it's Wednesday right now, man. Sunday's right around the corner. Sunday's right around the corner. I'll definitely have more on the Saints before that game. Some things we talk about the Titans versus the Saints, some matchup things I'll be looking for and stuff like that. But, man, thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, this is the Boo Tragedies, and I'm out.